God bless. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Joshua chapter 1, verse 5 to 9. And there's so many practical ways this can bless you today as a Christian. And this is why I'm calling it your prosperous pathway. Joshua chapter 1, verse 5 starts by saying, There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. Now, this is powerful. Firstly, let's highlight this part of the verse. There shall not any man be able to stand before you. It's, it's amazing, right, how many of us today as Christians are afraid. When I think about this verse, one of the things we should be thinking is there's nobody that can fight against you and prevail. As a Christian, as a child of God, there is nobody who is able to take you out. This is what God is saying here to Joshua, but verses like this apply to you today. I know when you hear this, you may be thinking, wait, wait, hold on, wait. Nobody is able to stand against me? Yes, that's what the Bible says. It says it in the Old Testament, it says it in the New Testament. Let me give you one example, right? Notice the Apostle Paul here in Romans chapter 8. In this glorious passage in Romans where Paul is highlighting the power of us as Christians, notice what he says. Towards the end of chapter 8, he says, what shall we say then to these things? The things I've just been telling you about being a child of God, how we're able to overcome, right, by being born again. He says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Isn't this the same thing that the Lord was just saying to Joshua in chapter 1? There's going to be nobody able to stand against you. As a child of God, you need to tell yourself mentally every single day, when I'm aligned with God, there's nobody that can defeat me. These are the kind of things I'm reminding myself on a day-to-day -day basis. Every single time I'm following what God says, there's nobody who can be on the other side and prevail, no matter what it looks like. But let's continue. The next part I want to highlight from this verse is, how long does he say this is for? He says, all the days of your life. Notice I just said a moment ago, right? We're supposed to be doing this. I do this on a daily basis. Why? Because I want to consistently remind myself mentally who I am. As a child of God, if I continue to do the things God wants me to do, if you continue to do the things that God wants you to do, there will be nobody able to stand against you. Not just for today, not just for tomorrow, by God's grace when we get there, for every single day on earth that God graces you with, there will be nobody to be able to stand in front of you and defeat you. Why? Because God is the one that is with you. Let's go back to the verse. He says, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. And notice this last part. I will not fail you nor forsake you. As a Christian, I promise you, these are the kind of things you should be telling yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. Because God says this about his children all the way throughout the Bible, right? Nobody can beat you. God is going to be with you, right? And notice the Lord says, I will not leave you and I won't forsake you. When you're going through hardship, many times today, when I'm struggling mentally, physically, spiritually, socially, I try to remind myself over and over again, God says he will never leave me, he will never forsake me. It's empowering to think about that. It's more empowering to believe it though. But you're only going to get to a stage where you realise God is actually not lying. Right? I may lie to myself, you may lie to me, somebody else may lie to, may lie to me, somebody else may lie to you. But God never lies. And this is why we should continue to bank on what God says. What he says all the way throughout his word. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Let's go to the next verse. What does he say? He says, Be strong, Joshua, and of a good courage. For unto this people shall you divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Right? This is, like I said, God speaking to Joshua about going into the promised land and dividing it. We'll talk about that in a moment. But before I do that, I want to highlight something. Now, what does God say? He says, Be strong and of a good courage. You see, you need to remind yourself, when you go through this passage, over and over again in the passage, four times, Joshua is encouraged to be strong and to be courageous. Why? Because whenever it comes to doing the things of God, you are going to be met 
with a lot of resistance, as I like to call it. There's going to be so many things telling you, fighting against you to not do it. Think about today. I'm telling you, the word of God says that nobody can defeat you. Why? And you're probably thinking about it and saying, wait, but, but I lost here and I lost here and I lost here and I lost there. Some of the things, firstly, weren't losses. But the fact of the matter is, when you align with God, you are never going to lose. Never. God doesn't lose, so his children will never lose. That's what he's trying to get his children to realize all the way throughout the Bible. The best place for you to be is right here with me. That's what God's trying to get you to realize all the way throughout the word of God. So you need to consistently remind yourself, I need to be strong and I need to be courageous. Why? Not because you are undefeated, not because I'm undefeated. I have no confidence or very minimal confidence in myself. But I've got all the confidence in the world and it's growing every day by God's grace. Why? Because I consistently think about what God says. I try to consistently speak and say what God says. And most significantly, I try to act and live out my life in accordance with what God says. God wants you to be strong and courageous. One of my most favorite verses, I talk about this all the time. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us the spirit of what? Power and love and of a sound mind the enemy wants you to do the opposite the devil always wants you to do the opposite of what god wants you to do so where god is saying to joshua where god may be saying to you be strong be courageous the enemy will be trying to get you to do the complete opposite do you see when i'm telling you when you're aligned with god you will never lose that's what the bible said in so many different places this is just one example today but the enemy will have you believing and get you scared to think, wait, hold on, that doesn't make sense. How can I never lose? Well, I'm telling you how you can never lose. By aligning with God's word. Aligning with God and all the things he wants you to do. Mentally, physically, spiritually, and socially with everybody. God wants us to be what? God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. What's the opposite of these three? The enemy, the devil doesn't want you to be powerful. He wants you to be weak. He doesn't want you to love. He wants you to hate. He doesn't want you to be, to, to be sound or wise. He wants you to be foolish. Why? Because when you do these three, three things, you're going to lose and you're going to lose and you're going to continue to lose. But when you do what? When you start focusing on what God wants you to do, when you start becoming powerful through the Spirit of God, when you start becoming even more loving by the Spirit of God, and when you start becoming more wise by the Spirit of God, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to win mentally you're going to win physically you're going to win spiritually and you are going to win socially right we can bank on that not because i'm special or i'm some some guru or anything like that not because you're that special right we're all special because we're all made in god's image but we can win every single time because of the promises and the things that god says in his word consistently throughout god's word but let's go back to the verse now this is significant notice what he says here right God says to Joshua, you shall divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Now look, I'm not here to say to you, you're going to be dividing land, right? Because no, this in this historical context was God encouraging Joshua to fulfill his mission that God has desired for him. Now look, I just said this a moment ago. And I said this in a previous video. You don't have to go beyond Genesis, the first page, to realize that we are all, if we're human, made in the image of God. So what does that mean? God has created us all individually. And the fact of the matter is, you may not hear this every day, but you're going to hear this today. You are made in God's image. You are special, just like I'm special, just like Joshua was special. God has a specific plan, a specific mission, a specific call for you, just like he does for me. And the fact of the matter is, by yourself, you may think to yourself, you know what? I can't do it. Or you may think to yourself, wait, I can do it, but it's not really going to be that good. Or you may even think to yourself, you know what? Like, yeah, I'm good. But the fact of the matter is you are never going to be as good as you are or as confident as you are when you are thinking and focusing on what God is saying about you and your calling. This is why meditating on and getting into God's word regularly and following God's word regularly is going to be the best decision you can ever make in your life, right? If you are saved, the best decision you can make in your life is to follow God's word 
mentally, physically, spiritually, and socially as much as possible. But let's go to the next verse because we're going to get even more juicier now as we go through these next verses. Notice, God says to him, only be thou strong and very courageous. There's that phrase again, that you may observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wheresoever you go. These are some powerful pieces of text here. But we're going to go back and we're going to start again with this statement again. God says to him a second time now, be strong and very courageous. Why do you think that we need to remind ourselves? Why do you think we need to consistently go back to God's word to remind ourselves to be strong and very courageous? Because we are flooded every single day with the opposite messaging by the devil. And the devil infiltrates all of these different industries and he is enticing us on a day-to-day -day basis to consume all of these different things which are encouraging us not to be strong and courageous but are encouraging us to do what? Remember I said before the opposite? To be weak and to be hateful and to be foolish. But God wants us to be strong. The Spirit of God he's given us as his children is a powerful spirit. It's a courageous spirit, a bold spirit. Right? The disciples in Acts, they prayed for boldness. And then the Bible says that they were filled with the Holy Spirit and were able to speak with boldness. They were able to complete the mission that God had set up for them in boldness. Why? Because they were aligned. They were aligned in the right direction with what God wanted them to do. So when I align myself with God's will for my life and I begin to do it and do it and do it and do it, what is that? That gives me boldness. That makes me stronger and more, and more courageous. Why? Because I know and believe in and thinking more and more each day that, you know, this is where the Lord wants me to be. It's going to be successful. It has to be. As long as I continue to do what God wants me to do, it has to be successful. Because God never loses. God never loses. I remind myself about this every single day, as much as possible. Israel, remember, God does not lose. So if I don't want to lose, I, I, I like to win, right? I like to win. If I want to win as much as possible, learning, thinking about, and acting upon God's word is the best decision I can make as a Christian. But let's go back to the verse. Notice what it says. God says to him, observe to do according to all the law. There's a couple of powerful things we can glean from this. But notice, even in Joshua's day, don't make the mistake, don't get it twisted. Joshua had the word of God in his possession, right? From Genesis to Deuteronomy, right, what we call the Torah today, Joshua had it. And God was encouraging him, observe it, right, look at it, study it. And he says, how much? Notice what he says here, how much of it? Not just some of Genesis, not just some of Exodus, not just some of the places we like, all the law. Observe all of it. All of it is significant. How much more so for us today as Christians when we've got from Genesis to, Re Genesis to Revelation? And the plan of the enemy today is for us to do what? To only focus on a specific piece of text, the Christian. When God all over the Bible is going to showcase to you, as I'm going to show you, all of it is significant. Focus on all of it. Remember all of it. Why? Because even a book like Joshua, even a book like Deuteronomy, like I showed you in a previous video, has something in there for you today to be a blessing for you, to help you overcome, to help you on your journey to win in everything you do as you continue to align yourself with God's word. When you align yourself in God's army, God always wins and you will always win if you continue to focus on following what God has to say on all of these different areas in your life, mentally, physically, spiritually, and socially. But let's continue. Let's go back to the verse. This is a powerful part here. Notice what he says. Don't turn from it. To the right hand or to the left. You see, God desires that tunnel vision. When you turn to the right and when you turn to the left, you are, of course, you are, of course, you're going topsy turvy all over the place. But when you focus straight ahead and you continue to go, look, this is where this is where God is. God is saying, go forward, go this way. Take my word and move forward and go forward. And what's gonna happen as you take God's word, as you speak God's word, as you walk forward in God's word, you are going to win. 
But the enemy, the devil wants you to turn to the right. He wants you to turn to the left. I spoke about this earlier on, right, in the video. The devil is always trying to get you off track. He's always trying to get you to lose focus. Because when you lose focus, now you're in the position where what? You're going to lose. As you look this way, as you look that way, you are putting yourself in a position to lose. Full word motion. Let's go back to the verse. Now notice what he says. He says that you, right, follow the law, be strong, be courageous, follow the law, all of it, right? Don't turn to the right, don't to the left. And when you do that, you are going to prosper wherever you go. Notice what I said, right? How do we start this, right? God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. Paul says in Romans, what shall we say about all these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? What's, what's God saying to Joshua here? The same thing. That you may prosper wherever you go. You see? And that word prosper there is more so talking about skill, wisdom. That you can be skillful. And the powerful thing about it is anyway is when you're doing the wise thing, you're being like God anyway. And you're going to win. Right? You're going to get success. But prosper in everything you do. You can have wisdom. You can have the eternal skill which comes from God in every area of your life. Mentally, physically, spiritually, socially. In all four areas of your life, you can be very skillful. You can use the skill of God. Where does that come from though? Notice. It doesn't come from Netflix, right? It doesn't come from YouTube. It doesn't come from all of these different places. It doesn't come from the NBA. And it doesn't come from, like, I'm not picking on these things just for the record. These are just things that are coming to mind right now, right? But it comes from God's word. This is why. God's word, being in and around God, should be the most significant thing for us every single day. Because that's how we are going to be successful more and more each day. Now let's continue. Verse 8. God says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. Notice, the first thing I want to highlight is, notice what he says, he says, this book of the law, right, I told you about this before, at this point in time, Joshua has the Bible, right, up until what was written then, and God is saying to him, don't let it depart out of your mouth, and this is powerful, God is saying to him, don't let my word stop coming out of your mouth, consistently speak God's word. This is why I said to you earlier on, right? And I mentioned something like 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Because all the way throughout the day, there's many times when I have the opportunity to be afraid and my mind is taking me to a place where, hold on, but, but what about this thing? How are you going to do this, Israel? Like, not like, but you're afraid. And what do I do in those situations? I don't let God's word, I try as hard as possible not to let God's word depart from my mouth. I try to speak, right? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid, right? Psalm 27 verse 1. There's the, the Bible is littered. The Bible is filled with passages about being strong, about being unafraid, about being bold. Why? Not because we're special, but because the one who we serve is special, right? Let God's word not depart from your mouth. Consistently be speaking God's word. What does God's word say about the things you're thinking mentally? You should want to know that. What does God's word say about what you're doing physically? What does God's word say about the spiritual realm in your life? What does, God say about, what does God's word say about the social area of your life? Don't let it depart from your mouth. Continue to speak God's word over and over again. But it gets better. Notice what he says. Don't let it stop coming out of your mouth. And you shall meditate on it. Meditate on it how often? Day and night. Meditate on it day and night. Now, I want to read you um, a commentary quickly in a moment, which is sums up what I'm saying so far so powerfully, right? And it will segue us for what we're going to go into for the rest of today's video, right? But God is saying here, look, meditate on it. This thing should be on your mind all day, right? Daily. As well is the connotation when you look at the Hebrew of these words here. I want to highlight, right, this word meditate, Hagar in the Hebrew, right? Notice what this commentary says, which I thought was powerful, from Karl and Dilich's commentary on the Old Testament. It says, Hagar, the Hebrew word, right, for meditate, does not mean theoretical speculation, 
about the law, such as the Pharisees indulged in, but a practical study of the law for the purpose of observing it in thought and in action or carrying it out with the heart, the mouth and the hand. Such a mode of employing it would be sure to be followed by blessings. Then shall you make your way prosperous. He's quoting the scripture. And he says, for example, succeed in all of your undertakings. So what's he saying? What are they saying? So he's saying, look, this meditation that God wants you to do isn't a theoretical thing. This isn't just something that's supposed to stay in your mind, right? It can strengthen your mind so powerfully if you just keep it in your mind. But when you begin to action it, you're going to be leaving half of um, the profit on the table, if you want to put it like that, right? Because we've got the physical, but then we've got the, we've got the mental, sorry, but then we've got the physical. It's not physical application only. This is a practical thing. You're supposed to be meditating on God's word, thinking about it, and then applying it when it becomes a reality, when the situation comes. When you are doing something for the Lord and you feel like you're going to lose, that is the, that is the time passages like this, which God gave you to benefit you in the future, right? Those are the times these passages are supposed to kick in. And you're supposed to remember, wait, but God said to Joshua, as long as you focus on my word, and do the thing I'm telling you to do, there's nobody that can de defeat you, right? For the purpose of observing it, not in just your mental, but in your thoughts and in your actions and having it in your heart and on your mouth, when you can do that, then you can do it with your hands, right? And he says, at the end result of this is that your way will be prosperous, as the passage in Joshua indicates. But let's go back to the verse. He says, don't let this word depart from your mouth. Think about it. Meditate on it day and night. Why? That you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. Right? You see, the way in which we're able to action out God's word is by speaking it and by thinking about it. Because when we speak God's word, when we think about God's word, it's able to go into our hearts. And when we have it in our hearts, when we speak it with our mouth, and we think about it, it's so much easier for us to do it. And when we do it, that is how our faith increases. You see, right now, if you're having trouble hearing this message and believing this message, what's going to help you begin to believe more of what God's word is saying is speaking it, reading it and thinking about it. And then when you're able to do it, your faith will increase. And that process can recycle and go over and over again. And it'll go from speaking and thinking and acting and then believing it goes round and round and around and increases continuously right so when you do these things when the law doesn't depart from your mouth when it doesn't depart from your mind and you're able to do it what happens then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall have a good success and that word there prosperous is talking about success right this is why i said to you this is what i'm calling your prosperous pathway or your pathway to prosperity the prosperity that god wants for you mentally right when i'm talking about success and prosperity i'm speaking about what, what god wants you to think in your mind when i'm talking about prosperity for you in your physical world physical world that's what god wants you to do physically or how god wants you to look physically and i'm talking about spiritual prosperity or spiritual success i'm talking about how god wants you to live your life the spiritual man that's supposed to present itself, come out of you in order to interact socially. And that is by you doing the things God wants you to do socially as you interact with other people in order to glorify his name. The success, the prosperity, the prosperous pathway for you as a Christian is what? By speaking, thinking, meditating on, doing with your hands and believing God's word. And watch what happens. Let's look at this verse here, Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. God says, have I not commanded you? Is the third time, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. Powerful, powerful, powerful. But notice first, this is the third time, like I said, God says to Joshua, be strong and of good courage. Remember, every single day, the spirit of God, which lives in you as a child of God, powerful is loving and is sound, is wise. So you as a Christian should be trying to be powerful in everything you do. You should be trying to be loving in everything you do. And you should be trying to be wise in everything you do. Because when you do these three things, as a Christian, you are representing the king 
in the best way possible. But when you are weak and when you're hateful and when you're foolish, you are doing the things which the enemy wants you to do. Because those are the things which look bad from a, from an, a worldly perspective and are the things which um, put us in a position where we're taking the name of the Lord in vain. And notice what he says. Don't be afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. Don't be disgruntled. This is why I try to think regularly about the fact that I don't want to be afraid of things the Lord doesn't want me to be afraid of. I only want to fear or reverence or honor the things the Lord wants me to fear. So I'm going to honor the Lord, right? The reason I can make a video like this so easily and much more confidently today than in the past was because I may have been afraid of what people may think about certain things I may be saying. But the fact of the matter is, the fear for man has decreased and the fear of God has increased. You see, God wants us to be afraid of him in a awe, a reverential way. But God doesn't want us to be afraid of men or women if it's at the sake of us doing what he wants us to do. Because I'm more honouring and more reverential towards the Lord as I'm more fearful of what the Lord can do to me. Not to say what men or women can do to me. It's easier for me to walk straight and not to be turned to the right or to be turned to the left. But to look dead centre and focus on the things the Lord has for me. Now, this is what we call in scholarly terms an inclusio, right? It's like starting at one place and then going back, going around the block and coming back to the same place, right? This is what God does with Joshua here. Be not afraid, be not afraid. But notice, the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. What I'm going to say to you is imagine this, and then I'll tell you the action step uh, before we wrap up today's video. Imagine if in our minds, in our physical life, in our spiritual life, in our social life, we remembered every single day that God is with us. Imagine if we lived every single day, mentally, physically, spiritually, and socially, that God is with us. What would that look like? That's what we need to think about every single day because God is with us, right? What do we see in the, the beginning of gospel, the Gospel of Matthew, right? He shall be called Emmanuel, right? Why? Because he's with us. What do we see at the end of Matthew's Gospel account? The same messaging, the same thing that God was saying to Joshua, Jesus is saying in the New Testament, Lo, I am with you always until the end of the age. Why? Because Jesus wanted his disciples, that includes you and that includes me, to remember regularly that as we go about the, our mission, right, as he commissioned the disciples to go out, the Great Commission, right, at the end of Matthew's Gospel account, as he commissions you, as he commissions me to do the things that he wants us to do, remember, I am with you. That's what God wants us to remember. Now, today's action step, based on today's video, is for you to meditate on the fact, meditate on the fact that God is with you. In everything you do, I want you to go about your day-to-day -day life today thinking, God is with me. When you start thinking certain things, just remember, God is with you. When you start acting in a certain way, remember, God is with you. When it comes to spiritual things, remember, God is with you. And when it comes to social things, remember, God is with you. And until next time, make sure you like the video, share this with at least one person you know, and I'll see you soon by God's grace. God bless.